Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and we're at a point now where Pipulate can be connected to any spreadsheet. I haven't changed the spreadsheet it, it's connected to, but I'm going to have to soon for the sake of testing. But if I were to do a refresh while a particular uh, Google document key was given and you have the correct permissions to the document, you get question mark replacement. And that is a wonderful place to be right now. And it's time to move cautiously forward into this project in what is for me uncharted territories because I am brand new to the Flask application framework under Python. But what I do know is that I'm going to not want to propagate a lot of files. In other words, I want to stick with mostly just pipulate dot py in my um, repository as far as the files that, that house the Python code. There will be other files like HTML templates and CSS style sheets inevitably, uh, probably sooner rather than later. But for right now I want to make sure I, I take the steps necessary so that all the various behaviors that Pipulate can have, have, have paths, have routes, can be detected, can be acted upon. And it seems that my best friend at the moment is this quick start uh, guide under the Flask site. And app.route, which is the decorator that goes around functions that control routing, supports a methods uh, parameter uh, and it tells it it can do either uh, get and post in this case get seems to be the default but you can also tell it it can support post and because this one file is going to do so many different duties such as supporting a CSV upload I know I'm going to need the post method and I'm going to need to be able to detect, to detect it so this very thing on uh, the quick start guide uh, applies to me and I believe I just want to put it in here everything is going to be on essentially root or the the home page of the site such as it were so uh, wherever you host it on your Raspberry Pi I have it on an IP currently um, <clears throat> here but it's never going to expose a file name it doesn't need to I'm going to have parameters sometimes there's going to be a post method and it'll just come back to this URL, but it'll have a whole bunch of hidden data in the background from the form submit that just occurred. There's not a lot of reason to create uh, a concept of different files on this site. Uh, it's not going to be a highly exposed URL. It's probably going to be visited mostly as a result of a click on a bookmarklet. Uh, so every time you uh, make a change to this file, because we're in debug mode, there's a pretty good chance you'll see detected change reloading. And you have this great visual feedback even to know that um, this, your server is ready. I'm going to put one question mark in here. When the server comes back, I am going to test it. I guess this is a place where some processing speed faster than the Raspberry Pi would be nice, the stopping and starting of a uh, the web server. Come on, come on. No, well, I'm going to just see if it's uh, available already. And yeah, it was. That's an interesting thing. I guess you shouldn't wait for visual feedback. That's a lesson learned right there. And now... Uh, if request method equals post and then else. Those are the two real possibilities. I'm going to keep that framework that they uh, suggest in there. So and I guess right now, if it goes down that path, it's a pass. But I'll actually return CSV file upload 
because that's what's going to happen if it goes down that path, else, and everything we've done so far. And uh, this will start fleshing out the logic flow. So uh, I'm going to make some comments to myself. A book for uh, uploading CSV files, although that should almost be self-evident from the value I'm returning, but I'll try and stay consistent with my comments. Oh, well, you know what? I'll, I'll make a split here if there's anything in if request args. This is a real great Pythonic thing. If request.args else and uh, all this should probably go under there. else and that return do nothing should be under that else there so it's always going to be captured it's either a post or it's a get I mean there's some other possibilities but for the most part I'm dealing with post and get and if a post occurred uh, then we'll handle it in there if a get, if it wasn't a post, then it either, it's a get and it either has arguments or it doesn't. In fact, uh, yeah, this is good. That's a, a point where we should be able to test it. And again, it detected the change, reloading, and we will test a few possibilities. Before I get rid of that, I'm going to make this a bookmark up for now. I'll call it test. So I can get back to the key easily. I don't want to lose that. But this is a essentially a naked URL. So do nothing. Okay. That's going down to here. And so I am going to do tests. Shift Y for yank. I'm just curious. Yeah. It. And then P for paste. And I want to test whether a naked URL is seen as get. Okay, save, restarting, and get. Okay, so there's no reason to specifically detect get because something without uh, anything, any query strings on it is still get method. That's why a fall over to else is uh, is good, and in that else, it either has arguments or it has no arguments. Okay, do nothing, and then question mark replacement, replace question marks, even if it didn't, it didn't find any, but that's what it's going to uh, return. Okay, we're in a very good spot. Now, the next thing is going to be some sort of templates. If you, if you view source on this, you'll see that all that's there is just text. The browser is kind enough to show it to us, but it's not HTML. 
and we go back to our um, quick start guide and first it talks about rendering templates uh, or rendering templates and they use Jinja 2 as their as their rendering template and um, we've got sort of like a hello world example so I'm just gonna uh, jump right into it because we're, that page is gonna have to look designed pretty soon so from flask import render underscore template we'll add that to our imports here there's probably more efficient ways to uh, to write this and I got to be careful about my saves now because every time I do a save it's going to detect it and do that restarting in the background render underscore template when you have that you can return something that uses the template and there's a parameter here, name equals name. To render a template, you can use render template method. All you have to do is provide the name of the template and the variables you want to pass to the template engine as keyword arguments. Here's a simple example. Flask will look for templates in the templates folder. That's important. Case one, module. Okay, yeah, I make a directory called templates. I stick something in there. I use it in the uh, render template call. And then what is inside of there looks like this. If name, okay. So name equals, it's a name value pair. A name is what gets used in the template and the value that was set on the call is what gets used in the template. And I'm sure there's gonna be ways to hand an entire lists and dictionaries and stuff. This is where Python gets really, really powerful, but this is a template. And I guess I gotta go ahead and do it. And uh, let's see. Okay, I got this one available here. CD stipulate make their templates. CD templates. And I'm just going to call it uh, the pipulate, pipulate.html, vim pipulate.html, set paste so that indents don't get crazy, go into insert mode, do an operating system insert. This is going to be hello world, and I will follow that example pretty uh, diligently. So to call that, we return, and I'll just return that on the uh, none route here, doing the doing nothing route. Stipulate. And uh, I'll give a actual literal string here um, like all right the do nothing should have some HTML now when the sir hello Mike hey wow view page source there it is there's a title and uh, the parameter that we passed in and templates are now uh, implemented in the you know first step hello world way and I'll cut the video right there uh, actually I will do the git commit I guess I'll do that here oh, no I'll, I'll step out of it here that's fine sh git uh, add Templates. Get status. Yep, new one, modified one. Get commit. Did the flask hello world J I N J A two. 
ginger template example. Did the flask hello world ginger two template. Git push. Exit. Now we have templates. Uh, and we can start to make this uh, look a little bit more pretty, build some user interface. And I'm thinking the next big step is to have a button, just a single button that says pipulate, bam, and avoid the issues of bookmarklets for a while and make this work in almost all ways by just filling in some forms and then pipulating it, turning it into a verb. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon. And don't forget to subscribe.